Mike Candlestick Ninja coming at you with an update on uh, LAZR and then also touching a little bit on the VIX. Um, keep an eye on this 12 o'clock close. Uh, hopefully I get the video out before it, but it might not happen uh, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and then if you notice, I want to show you real quickly um, a little summary that I put together. And I also, you know, based on today's open short interest number, um, and I had ChatGPT fine tune it for me. But basically, you know, I've noticed we've been hovering around, you know, 27 percent, 26, 27 percent of short interest relative to the float and also between 50, 50 percent and 65 percent. Um, we're on the higher end here off exchange volume, definitely a lot of shorting. But we've had a pretty big spike over the last week in the short interest ratio from between seven to nine days to 28.71 days, an indication of uh, much higher risk, as you can see here. Uh, the short squeeze occurs when heavily shorted stock experience a rapid increase in its price, forcing uh, short sellers to cover their positions. So essentially, unlike you know using contracts to say short crypto or foreign exchange, right? With shorting stocks, uh, unless you use a contract-based platform like, you know, the, the mini, the mini futures and whatnot, but even then, you know, to trade stocks directly, you have to borrow from a prime broker, which is a con uh, basically a counterparty, a prime broker, uh, like a JP Morgan or whatever. Right. And this, you don't do this. This is just what happens behind the scenes. Um, the stocks are borrowed, right? You got to put up a certain amount of margin. And then there's obviously uh, maintenance uh, margin requirements to have different house standards, normally higher at different broker dealers. Um, and if you're shorting, you know, and you say you put up, you know, half the cash to short, you're borrowing the stock and it, um, from the broker and then you're immediately selling it essentially is what's happening. And then what happens is you hope the stock drops and then you can buy it back cheaper, pay back um, your margin uh, collateral portion. Right. And then any any interest because the prime the broker call rate right now, margin accounts is insane I mean, with interest rates over. I think it's over 10 percent the last time I checked. Um, so, you know, it can be relatively expensive and risky, blah, blah, blah. So when things start jumping, right, when there's a stock that's heavily shortened at such high shorting ratio and when the thing starts to spike and it hits, you know, and that's why, you know, there's a lot of uh, conspiracy theories. And I believe that some hold weight uh, given my exposure. But, um, you know, a lot of people in the past have or a lot of uh, uh, market makers have been known to push find where the stock use the level three pricing uh, or uh, price and market activity um, tools and everything else they have to see where are all the stops consolidated, where all the stop losses and push you to that point. Um, but even just standard buying that causes a stock to jump based on it being way oversold, that can start triggering a combination of buy um, buy orders, which are uh, buy stops that are basically protections uh, on short positions or collateral calls are essentially will force stocks to be sold. And then that also adds as buys to fuel the thing upwards. So as that's going, people then start to see the trend upwards and buy into it, thus pushing it further into the stop loss. And then it becomes a short squeeze and a perpetual uh, jump upwards. So I know things have been definitely, uh, you know, painful on, uh, you know, you can see the 12 o'clock close is coming here. Um, this right here, this line, we had uh, what looks to be a wedge here type of deal that, uh, that broke down about right, um, I believe it was right. I'm actually drawing this on a different time frame. Um, basically, I'm not going to get into all that right now, but you can see where it's overbought. This line right here on the four hour time frame, which is that we're going about to have a close in a four hour, I think we just did, um, is acting as resistance. We need that to hold, but there is still some bullish uh, technical, um, you know, and um, divergence here too. So it is possible, as I mentioned yesterday, that we come up and we hit somewhere between 19 and 20 before dropping, which obviously be bearish uh, for pretty much every equity, including this one. So over the relative short term, uh, we have broke through uh, 1.32, but I'm still holding strong. Um, you know, it's it's always tough on the way uh, on the way up to, to really you know hold strong on something you have conviction with. But that's where we're at right now. We need this VIX to drop. Could we test 20? Yes. Could we drop where we are? Yes. Uh, 12 o'clock close just hit. We'll see how it goes. It might. Candlestick Ninja, uh, LAZR, still bullish, but uh, experiencing some headwinds, but we have to hold strong. Um, like, subscribe, follow, and I'll have some more updates coming your way soon. Thank you.